Look, all I'm saying is when you put that hat on, it looks like it was a bandana. Yeah, or if you put it backwards, it makes me look extra hip, like the kids say. Nobody says hip anymore, man. That's like 20 I'm years too I'm basically a dad at this point in life. Hey, I'm I feel like, like a, I'm like a 30 year old too. dad, but without the kids. I feel like the 30 year old dad at work, which is interesting because half of them are like older than me. Oh, you ever work with teenagers? It's the fucking worst. <laughs> Dude, I work at a restaurant. No half the, sense of responsibility. It's like their first job and they're like, what's responsibility? They're yeah, like, like I had Looney Tune or whatever. <laughs> well, at Perimeter, there was this one kid who like could get off of school before one o'clock to come into work. Whoa, he had did a he like skip class? Whoa, I don't know because I only skipped class for assem. I only skipped maybe assemblies only... to play ping pong because I was cool. Maybe, Actually, I wasn't. Maybe but, he know. only had his classes in like the morning because like I had mm. that in my last year last of high year. school. I don't remember high school. I only skipped school for ping pong. But I only, anyway, I only remember the last year of high school, and that was because I actually had a circle of friends. You picked a great movie today. We absolutely did. Um, I was scrolling through the uh, show times for this upcoming weekend, and nothing interested me except for the foreign films. And I went through like this and the one out by Costco because Costco always has a Bollywood movie and half of them just weren't really interesting. But then I looked up Shin Ultraman and I just sat there and went, they went, they made another Ultraman movie. And I looked it up and this is apparently the 57th movie in God knows how many years this franchise has existed. I think since like the sixties or something. I've seen way too many of these things. Which I didn't realize, because like when I shot up, when I shot you up with a message to see this, I had, I, for whatever reason, Well, well the message you... was like, hey, do you want to see this movie? I'm like, yes. It was immediately like, I'm in. I don't even need another reason. I see Japanese. I see Ultraman. Let's fucking go. Because my only frame of reference growing up with Ultraman was um, every Yu-Gi-Oh! DVD that I had growing up, there was a commercial for a show called Ultraman Tiga that I think was in the 80s or 90s. Oh, they made so many of these things. All I know is back in 2017, I was suiting a short, the great American novel. And the one guy on my air, he was like, hey, have you seen Ultraman? I'm watching it on like a three hour long stream. And I was like, I'm in. I don't know what we're watching, but I'm in. And so we watched the entire original series, and ever since then, I've watched a lot of Ultraman. Okay. I love it. <laughs> now, before we get into how we feel about the movie... It's perfect. Wouldn't change a thing. Is this faithful to the source material in any capacity I mean, whatsoever? every series is different. Like, this is probably more faithful to the original series, where they actually have the team, but in other ones, they just have one person working beside... It, it, honestly, Ultraman's story is pretty irrelevant. It's all about fighting giant monsters. That's what we care about. At least that's what I thought going into this movie. Now, <sighs> to describe the plot of this is very simplistic and confusing okay. at the exact same Let's time. Let's go. Cool credits. We got some interviews there. The interviews at the beginning were great. That is true. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Yeah. But to see the lead actor who plays mm. the human form of Ultraman, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no way he was. I the don't one remember his name, suit. and it doesn't matter. We'll put his name up along with the uh, Japanese. Yeah, and then we had the director talk about it too that was pretty cool i liked how he was talking about the source material and everything it was and i really liked that both of them were extremely passionate about ultraman oh, the yeah. fact they both grew up with it they knew they both knew the formula inside and out mm -hmm. and regardless of whatever problem whatever troubling shit that happened in real life they were determined to make this movie at all oh yeah costs. i liked i liked in there how the director said when he played this in the u.s he got a reaction but in japan they didn't have any reaction i was like that makes sense because i went which to see didn't, um, which didn't surprise me yeah. because in that star wars documentary empire of dreams the producers talked about when it premiered in japan and everyone was dead silent and they were like, does that mean they liked it? And then the narrator of the documentary reveals that it's actually customary in Japan to shut the fuck up when you're in a theater. And see, I like that. But here's the problem. Can um, Canadians and Americans act like this in a fucking movie theater, please? But like, It Man 4. I saw It Man 4 in theaters, drove all the way to Toronto for one night only screening. That's the one where everyone was on their phones constantly. You told me the but story. But no one had a reaction to it. But I was there like, oh, oh, that punch is dope. And I was like, I was really into like Donnie Yen beating the crap out of people because reasons. Didn't you say that like almost everybody was on their phone? Yeah, they were the filming it. Too? I don't know. There was like 50, 60 torrents on the website the next day, I guess. But in short, I liked the interviews. 
Then we get to the first monster battle because it's all about the monster battles. At what do you think of this first monster battle? The first monster battle I thought was actually pretty cool. One thing that is legitimately good about this movie is that the kaiju designs are super, super imaginative. I would not have been able to come up with anything like this. You have a kaiju that can literally dig underground. Yeah. And when it comes out, it is literally, sh its head is literally shaped like a drill. Yeah. And when it opens up, it's actually basically a lizard, like a Komodo dragon oh, yeah. or an iguana. Oh, yeah. And it has yeah. two tails that are also drills and like, like plant it, it to the ground. It's like, uh, uh, plant uh, it to the ground so it has like its <laughs> footing when it launches. Oh yeah, the monsters are dope. Like the first monsters, like this like this Tyrannosaurus, uh, rhinoceros looking thing that's like camouflage yeah, it's and like, like half feeds on electricity like an evil moth. Or like Jamie Foxx wish he was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's half lizard, half rhino, and it shoots electricity yeah. out of its horns. Then Ultraman comes down and he's like, boom! And he's like, ah! And Just he like absorbs the energy! He punches like the rhino in the freaking space! It's cool! It does some it. weird piece. Yeah. yeah. He, he literally yeah. kills monsters with a peace symbol. It's dope. And then we meet our humans who are, you know, there's the, la the, the one lady got angry all the time really funny the other lady yeah she literally hold on hold on the one the first female we see in the movie has glasses yeah. and has a weird exaggerated smile about everything yeah there's a dweeb who i guess was a physics professor even yeah. though dude's a fucking dweeb he and writes things on no whiteboards like a boss the what the boss is a guy in a suit yeah that's and it. He's the guy and we keep did we talk about the angles in this room? The angles are awful. It's amazing. We'll get to the cinematography eventually. But then. But. But there's the other lady. And she's just, she's the new lady. And they're the special force thing. And they have to fight the monsters. But in reality, we don't give a shit because we just want to see monsters. And we get a monster every, I don't know, a half 20, hour yeah. or something like that. And then there's another monster. And this is the rhinoceros thing. It's got its claws in the ground. And it's got like a drill. And then it opens its mouth. And it's like, ah! And then the power is going back into it, and he's losing his power. And oh, it's freaking sweet! You have to see this thing. <laughs> this is like seven and a half minutes in, and we still haven't described a fucking thing about it. Doesn't this. matter. It's about the monster fights. <laughs> well, that's what I thought going into this. The reason I wanted to check this out is because I have never seen a Japanese movie about uh -huh. kaiju. Mm. Like, if I ever saw a Godzilla or a King Kong movie, it was made Pacific in Rim? America. Also made in America. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I wanted to see a Japanese movie where it was people in suits. People mixed with CGI effects and practical sets. Something It's that better than the Marvel Universe. The CG holds up better. Considerably. And yeah. even though it <laughs> technically looks more fake, the yeah. designs are much more imaginative. And the set pieces are things that you would not see in any Marvel movie. I mm. mean, a giant and another giant actually going fist to fist and doing judo yeah. throws on each other. Throwing them through a mountain. That's the shit that I want to see. Putting the drill behind there. Putting the drill behind there. Blocking for the nuclear waste facility. Let's go. But what I did not expect was that in between every 20 to 30 minutes just slap my own ass. of a kaiju fight, we are introduced to a group of people who go on and on about the most pathetic pseudo intellectual philosophical shit about humanity's existence. Oh yeah. And our main heroine, like not the hero, which I'll get into later because I feel like we're. I love doing the a subtitle that said alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> the physics <laughs> professor cracks open a can of beer and the subtitle alcohol. says alcohol. Like, what? You have to watch this in dub because it's hilarious. Yes. It's bad yes. and ridiculous. The lips don't match up. This is a 1950s monster movie now. That's, that's all this is. And it's perfect. I, I would not be surprised if they got, like, one guy and one girl to do the dubs oh. because nobody's voice I matches. Someone, I hope that one person did all the voices for the entire film. That would make it even better. <laughs> so after we fight the second monster, then we get to talk to the team, and then there's an alien. For reasons unknown. The plot of the movie is literally the first four, the four or five episodes of an anime. You have heroes yeah. who set up yeah. a conflict. There is a fight scene that goes on way too short. Yeah. Well, that, that one they were That's, talking. They're having a conversation. 
you know? Because but at the same time, like, <laughs> if you're gonna go cheesy over the top, like, do so much more than just absorb okay. energy or we got destroy with so a much action. Sign. Have you seen Godzilla 2000? They talk a lot. You are lucky you didn't have to sit if that's that. the if that's the Matthew Broderick one. No, I, no, Godzilla 2000 is a Japanese one. Oh, okay. <laughs> But, that you're um, thinking 99. Look, From the creators of Independence Day. In case you guys haven't noticed, this is going to be a severely out of context for <laughs> oh, yeah. but that's how you do it. So after the aliens come down, they convince the government to give them control so they can defeat Ultraman. The alien imitates Ultraman with a reflection of himself after he kidnaps real Ultraman so that he can then fight Ultraman, turn into his true form, get thrown into space so that our true villain can come down, offer the world how to be big and huge so the main lead girl can be massive and huge so that he can erase all their technology, bring it back, offer them that so they can have a conversation, destroy a power plant, so they can actually get to the plot of the movie where the big bad guy from Planet Light is like, I'm going to destroy the Earth because humans are, can be used for weapons. So then they have to like make a wormhole that goes into space and then Ultraman has to give up his humanity or his real, like his space life so the human can live because when he landed, he crushed the guy with the space life. It's beautiful. It's art. Tell your parents. Go see it. <laughs> Okay, now it's my turn to have a mini rant. Okay, so I have to give some context. Uh, For those who don't I know... I did, I explained the plot. No, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the depressing thing about it. Like, I gotta give some people... I have to give the newbies some idea of what Ultraman is. Ultraman is a giant mecha version of Superman. I mean, he is literally an alien who comes down to Earth to protect humans, poses as a human, porks a human that he works with, is his best friend or some bullshit like that. He's in a job where he is literally to observe all of the terrible shit that happens into the city and no one bats an eye when he disappears and is no. clearly the one causing all of this shit. But of course, because nobody has ever seen a giant tin man who is butt naked. <laughs> now, here's the question. Are those his space clothes or is he naked? That's a real line from the movie. The yes. The best line from the movie is like, why do these monsters always only attack Japan? <laughs> I, I just, I loved that they pointed that out because it's so fucking true. I think, wasn't there a Godzilla movie where they acknowledge the Matthew Broderick one and they say, oh, no, 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 that's not Godzilla. That's just Zilla. Oh, there's so many Godzilla movies. No, but like I saw, I, don't remember the exact I saw one. Andrew, I saw um, Angry Video Game Nerd talk about that uh, in one of his videos. How they like compl how Toho completely dissed the Broderick Godzilla, and I'm like, damn. I, didn't I even will know they defend could do that. that movie. It is fun and stupid, and you should have a good time. Not with like it. this. This is so much better, mainly because it knew exactly how fucking stupid they it was. They had one set for the entire base camp. Whenever they went on a monster mission, they're like, we have to go monitor the, the monster. They have one set. When they go back to the office, they have one set. Just, okay. they're like, no budget for that. So, that is all the context I can give, because that is literally all the context I have. Let's talk about the girlfriend of this movie, because the girlfriend of this movie... Wait, they were romantically involved? I don't know. I mean, I just call her the girlfriend, because in any other movie, that would have been the case. But now that I'm now that I think about it, they really have no chemistry whatsoever. No. And if I'm being honest, she was the one that was coming on to him and not the other way around, which is different. But that also ties into what makes her and what makes this probably the best comedy we will ever get in 2023. Well, I don't know. The year is still young. But well, nothing is gonna beat. You haven't what watched I've... Santa with muscles yet. Shut up about Santa with muscles I already. I will never shut up about that movie. It's but beautiful. But anyways. The character's name is Asami. Like, yeah. I, I thought, I'm glad the, you remember I that. thought the pronunciation was Asami, but um, I guess that's just Legend of Korra. But in uh. any case, her name is Asami. Or as I like to call her, Ass and Me. Yeah. She slaps the back. I steal all the thunder. Yes, you do. So anyways, the girlfriend in this movie, or best friend, or platonic friend, or whatever the fuck, like, the second she meets Ultraman, she declares him her buddy, even though he is a condescending prick when he is in disguise, which does not last long, because somehow, not even within five minutes, his team figures out that he is Ultraman, which... Well, it makes How? sense. It makes sense. Because when Ultraman crashed down to Earth the first time in the opening sequence, he crushed the actual real character. 
So then he that, absorbed the, the thing of all... Because then he's acting like an alien. They're like, well, he's foreign. That's weird. That yeah, doesn't make any nobody, sense. Nobody points that out. They just say he's gone because all the time. Because the movie thinks you're smart enough to figure it out. Which... I will give it credit. I, it I love that the movie actually does that. I just wish there was more of a streamlined way of the characters announcing this. But I keep oh. getting off track. Ass and me, I call her that because whenever she decides to... Whenever she pumps herself up, yeah. she literally cups herself. Yeah. She grabs her ass. She grabs everyone else's ass within yeah. the room, whether it's a girl or a boy. She is the HR department. Yes. <laughs> yes. She is female representation for predators everywhere. I... <laughs> we got here somehow. <laughs> how, is, oh. how does this make any and sense she's big in the film. What did you think of her being like a giant and like trying to like punch a building with her elbow and shit? Yeah, out of nowhere she's a hypnotized giant yeah. who is destroying things. And then it turns out there is this fucking anime villain who can like turn invisible yeah. and teleport and turn yeah. into a giant... And he was awesome. Freaking I mean, sweet. You, he's everything you love about an anime villain. He's always happy. He's always smiling. He explains everything to you like you are a fucking And idiot. he wants to deal with the government, too, because the government is important. Yes, and my God, you know he's intimidating because as he's explaining his evil plan, he's on a swing set! Up and down. Did you tell him when they... Tell he them gets, how they swung. He gets up on the swing with his feet like he's a five-year-old. And Ultraman is just sitting there, like, depressed as hell. <laughs> and then they disappear to a Japanese restaurant because of reasons. Yeah, they bond over sake cups. Yeah. And, and, like, he peas. shugs one down yeah. to say, I am going to go to war with you. And that but reminds Ultraman me only takes half a sip because he's a good guy. And you know he's a good guy because he's dressed in all white while yeah. the villain is dressed in all black, which yeah. is subtle. But the the girlfriend, when she turns into a giant, somehow she falls asleep. And the yeah. military is so kind that they literally put blue tarp over her body while she is asleep. And the asleep. movie knows this. They even reference Gulliver's travels in the film. And then they say, ah, you're too young to get at this. They even reference them and make fun of their own selves. Yeah, and... When she wakes up, when she is restored to her human self, her line is, how, why am I sleeping under a blue tarp? I don't remember drinking that much. Like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Did, remember the one line in the movie where they're like, we're all here on lockdown for Ultraman. And he's like, man, I really wanted to go to the popcorn party. I don't remember that one. The guy just had to go to a party, but he had to stay in the room. The only thing fantastic. I remember about the hotel is that we needed to get a camera oh. angle of the bag of in chips. In the bag of chips. As she's reaching in for the bag of chips, like what or how the... about the camera angle beside the chair going to the guy and only him, he's only in this part of the frame over here. The cinematography is fucking awkward and I have absolutely no idea why. There are so many sequences where like, where literally it's... Framed yeah, exactly like I'm over this. here. Or when they break the over the shoulder rule. Or did you see the really bad green screen in the part where then deciding to like make the plan and you could see the green marks around them? It was perfect. It was or perfect. Or like where you get an angle within an angle through their desk chair. Yeah. Like what was the point of that? It's perfect. <clears throat> Hell, as the villain is swinging on a swing set, he's out of focus. We're staring at these Cut the shoes. The shoes are more important than the conversation. Yeah, you know they're intimidating because you're staring down at their feet. Or how about like the scene where if movie. Ultraman doesn't go with them, this is going to murder everyone in the office with the SWAT team outside because reasons. And then as soon as Ultraman's... Yeah, it literally goes like this. Surrender yourself or we will kill all of you. No. Okay. Bye, <laughs> the SWAT team. <laughs> yeah. What do you think that stuffed animal meant? They kept cutting to the stuffed animal. It's red, white, and blue, so unless it's like a pro-America oh, thing... Oh, or how about this? When the government was like, we need missiles, get them now! And they're immediately there. Like, everything happens immediately in this movie. Yeah, they, no launch, all, they launch all their nukes, and they're just they're like, like... Oh, we launched all our bugger missiles, they're gone, bye, okay, take us 15 years to get more. And he, and the, what was the joke? In the first bit, they're like, call the president of the United... Call the prime minister of the United States. Put it on his tab. Can we split the bill? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfection. 
I wouldn't change a thing. This is art. You guys are not gonna catch it in theaters because this was like one night only for the sub and yeah. one night only for the dub. But when this gets on VOD, Watch it. get some friends, get some weed. Get some drugs. Get all the drugs, get all the alcohol. Go against your doctor's orders. Alcohol. <laughs> Subtitle that right here. <laughs> is alcohol like illegal in Japan? Like what I the don't fuck? Know. But uh uh, but you should see this movie. <laughs> oh, I fucking, lo I fucking love this movie. It's the best stupid movie I've seen since Kidnap. And you that's a bad movie. <laughs> I'm not good at finding so bad it's good movies. I think the last time was Cats. Oh, I didn't even see that. Dude. <laughs> I'm okay. Dude, you have got to see Cats. One of these days when we have a house party, we have just got to put it on. We have got to have like an hour's worth of edibles on us. It, it'll, it'll totally be worth it. I mean, for starters, the singing in Cats, for the most part, is good. Except, Unless you're is in, isn't James Corden in that? James Corden's not a bad singer. He's just... Have he's, you seen Into the Woods? I turned it off after he started singing. I was like, nope, I have dignity. Yeah, but Meryl Streep was singing in that, so what's your excuse? The beginning. Meryl Streep didn't sing because <clears throat> James Corden was singing, so I never got to her singing. He also tried to sing with Queen, which is a crime against humanity. Lock that man up. Keep in mind, the skit literally says that everyone except him is a good singer in that. Mm. I like that video, by the way. Is it Emily Blunt in the beginning with him? I, don't I think so. I don't think so. Oh, uh, whoever. I, I don't she remember. can sing. He can't. Well, of course Emily Blunt can sing. She's Mary Poppins, y'all. That's true. So, um, I got nothing to add to this. Ooh, it's a perfect movie. And this is the most perfect video you've ever made, Tyler. It's definitely one of the most fun I have had making a video, and we've really got to do this more. I yeah, should... yeah. No, like last year we saw Jackass Forever. That was like our first comedy of the year or something. And this that was did, funny. And this uh, did the exact same thing. Yeah. This is kind of an omen for us. Make me a sequel. I want it. I want it now. I want the Ultraman. Movie. Well, I mean, this came to us from the same people who gave us Shin Godzilla. Great so movie. whatever Shin reboot is next, I'm there. Shin My Little Pony. <laughs> No, 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 no. Shin Rainbow Bright. Shin there, Care Bears. There, what? I'll be honest. I've listened to one My Little Pony song, but that's just because the Weird girl Al was in an episode of that. Only episode I've ever watched. But that's only because the the girl on my right arm was one of was how about that this? Pony singing. A gritty reboot of Baby Shark. Shin Baby Shark. You know the weird thing is that girl is also the voice of Baby Shark. Oh my god. I'm not even kidding. We're crossing universes here. Kamiko Glenn, you are awesome. Give Shin Godzilla and, and you shit are... this one an Oscar. Give it an Oscar. Give it all the Oscars. Give it the Golden Globes. Give it the Razzies. Give it an Emmy. Give it give it the one they did for Broadway shows. It's literally the most brilliant movie you'll see this year. I might have to for my best of the year list for this year, I might have to put a to best worst. Yeah, a best worst. I'm movie. giving this four out of five stars on Rotten Tomatoes and you can't stop me, world. I enjoyed myself. That's all I gotta say. Still laughing about it. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for um, watching whatever the fuck this was. And thank you for not letting me know what I was getting myself into. You said you didn't want to know. You were like, I've never seen Ultraman. That's my impression of you. It's very bad. I admit that. And I didn't tell you a thing. I was going to tell you about it, but I didn't, I didn't say a word. And you are, you are, you, you are. What do you think such... that like those two guys down there below us thought? Like there was that guy with the backpack, and he was bald. And then there was that other guy with the hat. The guy who kept sneezing and blowing his nose. I heard him laughing, so he was definitely he was definitely having his money's worth. That's oh, for yeah. sure. There were four of us. <clears throat> four people got to see this movie tonight, and you will see it too. Hopefully, you should see it. If you have by any chance seen Shin Ultraman, let yeah. us know in the comments below. Just tell us something. Should I comment because I've seen it? Yes, okay, please. Okay, cool. I'll comment on it. Be sure to stay tuned for more reviews. Be sure to like, subscribe. Check out his other channel. I have like five of those. I'll give Tyler a link to one. Yes. <laughs> Be sure to check me out on Patreon. And once again... Whoa, you got Patreon? Yo, put that, put, what you got on the Patreon? If I like give you a dollar, what do I get? Click that damn website and see for yourself. <laughs>
I'm not gonna fucking tell you on this video. Oh, but you could. I could, but I won't. The element of surprise. <sighs> Bye. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> In the words of Critical Drinker, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. I'm Josh, and this is Tyler, who has for fucking fantastic. <laughs>